ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದ್ಯಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಫಾರ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಓರ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ to place oneself in the vicinity of spiritual sound vibration. So no before I have the pleasure of of saying more about the Krishna consciousness movement and the philosophy I offer my obeisances to my spiritual master the divine grace Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Krishna is and my my respects and obeisances to all of you so you are Vaishnavas and therefore you're the most uh, worshipable of all. This is uh, a very important uh, place, this temple. Because here we experience the atmosphere of the spiritual world. And we are sentient beings. We have uh, deep feelings. Actually, uh, we're all looking for uh, the deepest of all feelings, which is love. There's a famous song in America that uh, has the lyrics that uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. In Japan, you might have poetry that says similar things. For those of you from India, you might have heard songs similar to this. Where the, the, the author of the song or poem is lamenting about not being able to find love. Either that or saying that I found love and then I lost it. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that this uh, lifetime that we have is especially meant to prepare ourselves to uh, experience the highest kind of love. And I'm looking around the world, but I never find anything that is satisfying. For a few minutes or a few seconds, I feel satisfied. And then I, then I want some other object to look at. So, in the practice of yoga, we're meant to find that ultimate object that will give us satisfaction. And also find that uh, person in whom we can uh, give our love and receive love in 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 return. Now this is the meaning of bhakti yoga. Uh, fixing one's mind on the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna. He is both the object that we can meditate upon and feel satisfied. 
And the person in whom we can give our love and then receive perfect reciprocation of love. And so the bhakti scriptures recommend that one、uh, use one's time in this life to prepare oneself、uh, and to prepare one's mind to、uh, meditate on that object, Krishna. And it takes uh, uh, some time to be successful in any practice. In the beginning of any discipline or practice,、uh, we may feel a little bit discouraged. Because、uh, we will be bad at something before we get good at it. And a way to avoid becoming discouraged is to consider that、uh, what I'm doing in this life is a preparation. For something much greater. As、uh, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu often says, this、uh, world is not a station, or is not, it's not a destination. But it's a station from which we're、uh, getting prepared to go back to our original home. So, isn't it、um, helpful to know that what we're meant to do in this life is to prepare ourselves for that、uh, journey? I read a, a sign in the airport in、uh, Bangkok when I was going to the airport. It was an advertisement for、uh, some athletic shoes. And it was a famous sportsman from Argentina. Whom I'd never heard of before. <laughs> But his name was Leo Messi. <laughs> Do you know? Have you heard? Leo Messi. He's famous? <laughs> I feel lucky to not know him. <laughs> In any case, he looked very nice. <laughs> but, but what he said I found very applicable to the practice of bhakti yoga. He said, I was an overnight success after 17 years. He started like everybody else, not being very good. But after 17 years of preparation and practice, he became qualified to sell athletic shoes. <laughs> Which is no small thing. Only famous people can sell shoes. And in a similar way, we can take、uh, the time that we need throughout this life. To prepare ourselves. To become an overnight success. After 50, 60, 70 years. And so there are, there are people who have 
mentioned the uh, idea of, of preparation. And one of my favorite quotes about preparation is from the Duke of Ellington. Duke Ellington. Duke of Ellington. Duke of Ellington. <laughs> yes. He said that wise, wise people learn when they can. And fools learn when they must. <laughs> to me, this is the essence of the idea of preparation. The word preparation has pre in it, which means before. Srila uh, Prabhupada once said that one must uh, cheat death before death cheats you. You have to prepare for that. You have to stay a step ahead of death. In fact, one place, uh, Prabhupada talked, does everyone know who Yamaraj? In the Bhakti scriptures, Yamaraj is uh, the very powerful uh, deva or demigod. Who oversees death. So it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam that um, when you have a, a kirtan like this, you should invite Yamaraj to come. But please give him a nice seat. <laughs> Let him participate in the Harinam. Nice prasad. If he's nearby and he's happy in the kirtan, then he can't come and get you without your warning. <laughs> so if one uh, takes the opportunities that one has before one has to, then uh, this is called preparation. Uh, one of the books about Srila Prabhupada's life is called A Lifetime in Preparation. Uh, seemingly, he had taken a long time to uh, come to America after he had gotten an instruction from his guru. In Japan. And he looked to be an overnight success after, after uh, 70 years. 70. Uh, people were amazed that, that he was able to uh, spread a spiritual movement around the world. But he also stayed within the mood of preparation. When we stay in the mood of preparation, we'll never feel discouraged. Especially if we remember the words of Louis Pasteur. Especially if we remember the words of Louis Pasteur. Like pasteurized milk, he invented it. Pasteur. He said that great discoveries come only unto the prepared mind. 
I may feel that uh, my uh, great fortune has not come to me yet. But maybe it has. But because I wasn't prepared, I didn't see it. So those who are wise are always preparing themselves. So they can take advantage of every opportunity. So uh, the Bhagavad, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about ways in which to prepare, prepare our body, our, our mind, our body, and our speech. So the mind has to be in a prepared state. There's a lot of different states that the mind can be in. So one of the ways in which to prepare the mind to uh, think of Krishna and to feel satisfied, which is one of the austerities of the mind that Krishna mentions in the Gita. Is to always think about how to do good for others. The boy saint, Prahlad Maharaj, who was five years old, and who was a spiritual master, being perfectly enlightened. Uh, told us something about the mind. He says, when the mind starts to think about how to get happiness for oneself, that's when uh, my suffering begins. You don't even have to try to get happiness. You just have to start thinking about how you want to try to get happy. And because it's always a little out of reach, uh, the mind becomes disturbed. That either I won't get the happiness, or that when I do, it won't be enough. However, when we when we think about serving others, then we feel immediate satisfaction. The mind is meant to uh, think about how to do service. And this is one of the ways in which one can prepare the mind to, to think of Krishna. Is to be service oriented. And uh, is it possible to get more air in the room? We don't have a we don't have a, a ban on air, do we? Some, some cross ventilation. Anybody here like air? Yes. Thank you. The second way that is recommended in order to prepare the mind uh, to uh, cheat death and to take us to the highest position in um, yoga. Is to hear stories. 
but not any ordinary story. The stories uh, from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and other spiritual literature. Have you read the Mahabharata? Yeah. You heard the Ramayana? You know about the Ramachandra? Do you like the stories? Me too. You can listen over and over again to the stories of Lord Ram. There, there are many characters in those stories that are very interesting. Who's your favorite character in the Ramayana? Huh? No, no, that's not an answer. Who's your favorite character in the Ramayana? Hanuman. Of course, everyone knows Hanuman is the best. I mean, when Hanuman was a little a baby, he's not an ordinary monkey. He was born from the wind god. And we've seen a lot of monkeys, right? And they're, they're pretty amazing what they can do. <laughs> but if you see a, a, a monkey born from the, from the wind god, he can jump to the highest point in the universe. <laughs> then your mind will really uh, become amazed and think. And when Hanuman was just a little baby monkey, he was um, inclined towards monkey business. Monkey business. Monkey business. Monkey business. Everybody knows monkey business. <laughs> and what could be more cute than a monkey with the power of the wind god? <laughs> and so, as a baby monkey, Hanuman jumps and he saw because he saw the sun and he thought it was an orange. He thought, I'll take that orange and I'll eat it. And all the devas realized he could actually grab the plant. <laughs> so they had to uh, knock him down. And then they gave him many benedictions. All kinds of powers he had. But then they made him forget those powers. Otherwise he would have ruined the whole universe. Because that's what monkeys do. They're born to wreck stuff. And when the time came for Hanuman to jump to Lanka, the time that the curse would be lifted came. He stood on the Mahendra hill. He grew in size. And then he jumped. And the impression of his foot pushed so hard into the Mahendra hill that uh, springs of water started shooting out all over the hill. All, all the snakes and animals who live underground, they all came out and they said, what happened? And when Hanuman uh, went over the ocean, he had to go past many obstacles. A demon tried to swallow him. 
He made himself bigger and bigger. And this demoness kept making her mouth bigger and bigger. And at the last second, he made himself tiny. And he went right through the demon. Came out the other side. So one can listen to the stories of Hanuman. And I remember reading the Mahabharata several times. When I first was introduced to my wife, Nirakula. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we spent uh, about one year before we got married, we'd meet and we'd read Mahabharata. And I remember becoming so absorbed, I couldn't wait to read the book again. All the stories of, of the, the wars and uh, how the armies configured themselves. And then the day we read about Abhimanyu, who, who, was, who fought against all the... He was just a young man, but he was so powerful warrior, he went against all the, all the older big warriors on the other side. And they made, they made a special trap just to, to uh, catch him. And when they killed Abhimanyu, we could not sleep for three days. <laughs> we were walking around morose. The people at the temple say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Don't you know they killed Abhimanyu? <laughs> How could this happen? We, we, we were affected deeply. And then within the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita. And when we read Bhagavad Gita, we get to understand the intelligence of God. And read it again and again. And again. It satisfies the, uh, the deepest sense we have for, for um, uh, stimulating the intelligence. So, so one can transfer one's mind from this world to the spiritual world by hearing stories. Does this sound like a good idea? Bhagavad Mark? Let the record show that Bhagavat Mark, our young pundit, <laughs> musician, <laughs> bright young man, <laughs> artist, <laughs> he says that it's a good idea <laughs> to listen to spiritual stories. <laughs> and I don't know what other proof you need. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did this exclusively in his last days. He simply listened to the stories about the spiritual world. So now let me ask you, what are the two ways to prepare your mind to go to the spiritual world? Yes. Do good for others. What about do good for others? <laughs> Preparing the mind should think about how to do good for others. Yes. Uh, you, if you think about ways in which to do good for others, then your mind will become prepared. 
If you think about doing service, if you think, what's the best way that I can serve? Then two things will happen. One is that you'll see opportunities everywhere. Because there are unlimited opportunities for service in this world. And the second thing that will happen is that people will welcome you wherever you go. Just like our friend Harigana Prabhu. He's a, a top-rate Pujari. And he's always thinking about how to do good for others and how to do his service. The result is everyone around the world is saying, Harigana, why don't you come to our place? On, on the other hand, people who are thinking about how to do good for themselves only, everyone says, please don't come to our place. <laughs> so first of all, you'll, you'll have unlimited uh, opportunity if you think in how to serve. <laughs> means full employment. <laughs> and plus, everyone will like you. If you think that's a good idea, say Hare Krishna. <laughs> that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Confirmed. So, this is how to prepare the mind to go to the spiritual world. These two things. And then, how to prepare the body. So, one of the ways is uh, Krishna says that the body sh should be uh, in, uh, in the uh, mode of sattva gun, in goodness. And this means to be very clean. So, the other way to prepare yourself for spiritual life is to be very clean. Uh, I think the cleanest person I know is Satyadev Prabhu. <laughs> Whenever I, I travel with Satyadev, I always look at his stuff and I look at my stuff and I think, how does he stay so neat and clean? When I walk in his room, I see everything's in its place. And I feel like meditating on Krishna. And when I walk into the mess of my room, I think, <laughs> maybe I'll take rest and wake up in 12 hours. <laughs> so, this is something that one can try, is to, to be very clean. Uh, one way to, to be very clean is to not collect many things. <laughs> Try to keep only what one needs. <laughs> this is an ongoing and constant endeavor. <laughs> you think because things attach themselves to us in this world. <laughs> But the, uh, in yoga, we should keep only those things that we need to do service. If you need more things, then you can keep them. And the other way to stay clean uh, yeah. 
The other way to stay clean is to constantly chant Hare Krishna. Let's try. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, uh, the, the Vedas say that in order to be clean inside and outside, one should always remember Krishna. And the other way to prepare the body is to eat prasadam. Because whatever we eat will affect our uh, physical and mental nature. So uh, these are two ways to prepare the body. And then uh, we have to uh, prepare our words. So what were the first two, two things we were preparing? First was? Second was? Third was? Words. Okay. So uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that the, your words have a, a, a deep effect on your consciousness. And that um, whatever words we say will uh, deeply affect us. And they also affect other people. So he says that we should uh, speak truthfully. And we should avoid uh, words that offend others. And our words should be pleasing. And we should also regularly recite the Vedas. Especially the Bhagavad Gita. And the Hare Krishna Mantra. And if we prepare our tongue by reciting Bhagavad Gita and speaking truthfully, this will help to uh, direct us back to Godhead. So these are three very practical points that Krishna makes in the Bhagavad Gita. That anybody can try. And now we'll take some reflections. A reflection means anything that you heard that you found useful or interesting. You can take out of here and use later. And when you walk out this door, if somebody grabs you by the arm and says, what was that guy talking about? This is the one thing that you'll say. Yes. Preparation. What about it? Preparation. He said preparation. Jumbi. Jumbi suru. Give him the mic. So... This lifetime is for preparation for the spiritual world? Yes. Very good. What else? Uh, uh, mind, words, and uh, body. Mind, body, and words. We have to Okay, yes. Yes. 
そういうことですねあの賢い人はあやる前に準備をしていく準備をして,て先にしておくそして、えー、愚かな人はやらなきゃいけない時になってからやるということです What else? 他にありますか、uh, cleaning, uh, my room. Yes, I noticed that if I clean my room at night before I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning, I think, who did this? Which person was so considerate? And then I remember, oh, it was me. And then I suddenly remember, I have a higher purpose in life. I'm, very, I'm civilized. I feel happy with myself. And I also feel focused. When we have many things out on our desk or in our room, Then the mind goes to many different things at once. But it's, it's an old trick if you're working on a problem. If you put everything else aside or put it away and you only keep that one thing. And don't keep looking at your phone. If you focus on the one thing, then you can do a good job and get it done. Yogi knows this because she's a CPA. <laughs> She has to concentrate on numbers. <laughs> also, when you have extra things in your environment, it,、uh, it's called visual noise. So, spiritual people try to live in a、uh, very clean and simplified environment. What else? Yes, no, I mean, service. Yeah. Always prepared, thinking of service. Narayani is always thinking about how to do service. In fact, she moved, in, she moved to New Dwark and she moved in a, in a room that's right across from the temple. Because she's always looking out the window where to do the next, her next service. <laughs> This is preparation. Put yourself in the place where you can do the service. You'd be the first one to get the service. <laughs> If you always think like this, then you'll feel satisfied. And people will like you. What else? y e s One must teach the dead people that teach you. Yes. <laughs> And Prabhupada said you must be very expert to do this. In fact, we were just reading in the Bhagavatam. The father of Jad Bharat. <laughs> it says that although he forgot that death was going to come and get him, death didn't forget him. So you have to be prepared for that. Keep yourself、uh, always ready. In preparation. What else? Yes, r a d i k a Who's the guy she? Kantan. If someone gets to know Krishna consciousness, then he becomes responsible. So, the other leading entity to share that. Share s u r u Sharing means caring. 
Salvation Army said that. What else? Other things? What did you hear? Yes, Nitai. Yes, uh, example, good example, Leo Melfi. So we, <laughs> we need to practice. So he practiced 70 years. Yes. So six times. Yeah, Leo Messi was an overnight success after 17 years. So Messi was, you know, so you made, what was the Yeah, so Prabhupada writes in the book, Light of the Bhagavad. The Prabhupada, Light of Bhagavad, you And this was a book he wrote while he lived in Vrindavan, before he came to the West. He got an invitation to come to Japan. It was a seminar called the Cultivation of the Human Spirit. So Prabhupada stopped all the other things he was doing and he wrote a book to, to bring to Japan. And he tried to get money to come, but he couldn't get anything. And so the book remained in manuscript form. In that book, he talks about uh, the power of uh, bhakti. And he said you should be very patient. And you should have faith. Faith that the, the seed of bhakti will grow. And he says that uh, bhakti has its own power. And once you take to the process of bhakti, that even if you make mistakes, he said these may not be detrimental. They may not be bad for you. They may become the pillars of success. Shri Shri Radha Govinda Ji Ki Jai Shri Shri Nitai Gaur Sundar Ki Jai Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ji Ki Jai Yarmarman Natari Yarmarman Natari Yarmarman Natari Yarmarman Hey Natari Yarmarman Natari Yarmarman Natari Armarman, Natari Armarman.